So what's the relationship between R Markdown and notebooks? Well, as you can probably uh, tell, there's quite a few similarities. Um, traditional, I, when I mean notebooks, I mean the traditional computational notebooks like Jupyter and Zeppelin and Beaker. Uh, they, there's a reproducible workflow by default. You can create code and output and put them in a single document. Uh, there's some notion of having interactive widgets inside the, uh, the, the notebook. And there's a notion of getting the notebook out to different formats. So probably more similarities than differences. But there are some, some differences, and I think these are, not, these are not inherent differences. They're more differences of emphasis. Um, our Markdown has, has a plain text representation for its, the, the source document for our Markdown, the thing you're editing, is just a text file, um, which means that you use the same tools that you use to edit our scripts are also used to edit our Markdown documents. Um, and we've also focused, and I'll get into more of this as the talk goes on, we've very much focused on production output. We focused, there are, there are dozens of output formats for our Markdown, and we're focused on creating excellent representations of data and analysis. Analyses. On the other hand, notebooks have this wonderful attribute of output and is in line with code. You, you have your code and your output, and you're working with them all together in one document. Um, the output that you have in one session is cached to, for subsequent sessions. So if you do some work, you create a plot, come back to it a few days later, the output's still there for you to refer to as, you're, as you continue to tweak the, the work that you've done. And then you have this notion of, of combining code and output in a single file, one artifact that you can share um, for both viewers and people who want to play with the, the, the work that you've done further. And I'd say, again, emphasized execution model. Our Markdown has traditionally had a batch execution model. You can see I hit the knit button. I said, now I, I'm working on this file, now boom, knit, one shot, create a new R session, create the document, and display it. And whereas traditional um, notebooks have a more interactive model where you're sort of seeing the output as you work. Um, again, you can do notebooks, traditional notebooks in batch mode. You can work interactively with R Markdown. It's just, it's just sort of the, the emphasis that they've had historically. So the, well, the world that we want to live in, though, we want to preserve all of the things that we like about R Markdown, but we also want the benefits of these traditional notebooks. So that's, that's what we're aiming for. We want to do all the things that we've historically done, but also, also capture some of, these, some of the things that we see in other systems and have a system that works well interactively and works well in, in batch. So with that, I want to show you the work that we're doing. This is work in progress. It's actually not shipping yet. It's not shipping in a version of our studio that you can download, but we will ship it within the next couple of months. Um, so I'll show you that what we've done so far. All right. So this is a, an R Markdown document. Um, it's, as I said, let's get this adjusted a little bit here. So this has you know, narrative, text, headings, and code chunks. So now, right within the R Markdown editor, when I execute it to code chunk, um, the output shows up in line. Um, so I'll get another chunk here. I see the output in line. If I want to play with it, change things about it, and re-execute it, that's very easy to do. Uh, if I, as I scroll back through my document, obviously the output's preserved. I can close it and say I don't really want to see this anymore, and re-execute it. So that's the basic idea, that's text. Let's take a look at graphics. Um, here's kind of probably the simplest ggplot that you could create. And let's see, get my scrolling right here. So we'll add a couple of genomes here. And it updates, and now I'll add another genome. Let's see, we can do a smooth. It updates. So again, very easy to tweak things. The code and the output are married together as I work in other parts of the document, maybe provide some narrative, work in other code chunks, and I come back, I can see and recall the work that I did previously. So let's take a look at another document. This, this um, R Markdown document has already had, has had all of this code executed before. So this, I, I wanna sort of describe a little bit of the kind of the, the, the file format and serialization model of R Markdown notebooks. If I close this document and bring it back, the output is still there. So um, unlike um, the, the knit workflow where you knit, you see the output and you come back into it and you need to knit again to see your output, it's always there. It'll be preserved across sessions. It'll be preserved even across machines. So I can get back to my output. It's very easy for me to have a workflow um, similar to knitting where I can say run all or run all the chunks. Or I can say, well, I want a fresh start. I'm going to restart R and run all the chunks or I'm going to restart R 
and clear all the output so I can work interactively again. Um, so I want to get, so we've got this R Markdown document source file, but then how do I share this? How do I publish this? What, what is it that, that I would give to someone else? You can see that side by side, this is, this file's called image graphics. Side by side with it is this NB HTML file, which is a note, which is notebook HTML. So if I go look at that, you can see it's a web page that has kind of the same content that we saw in the notebook, but is HTML. You can see there's a couple, has a couple other controls for showing and hiding code. And it has the ability to download all of the source code. So, so if you send this notebook to someone and they say, well, I want to play with this locally, they can just download the source code. Um, furthermore, um, let's, so, so let's just, I want to punctuate this relationship between the source code and the output. Uh, the source code um, is just a text file. The output is an HTML file, but it has the code in it. So if I, if I send that file to another system, let's, let's uh, imagine I'm a user on another system and I, someone sends me, it's, it's served off a web server or sent as an email attachment or it's on a file server or in Dropbox. I can just double click this and look at it as a web page. Okay, this is the same, same demo I showed you just with a simpler file. But if I give it to someone that has our studio, um, they actually can open the HTML file, just like they'd open any other file, and we will pull the RMD file out and lay it down on disk right next to the HTML file. So you can see I just opened the HTML file, but what do I see? I see a, an R Markdown document, and I see the source file placed down right next to it. So it's one file that can be shared with both source and output. Or you can keep them separate and, and only you know, keep re-rendering the output whenever you need it. So I showed you that um, this image graphics, and you can see I'm using this HTML notebook format, but there's no reason I can't render other R Markdown formats. They're not mutually exclusive. So I can work in this notebook mode and share an HTML file, or I can say, well, I don't really want to share an HTML file. I actually want to share uh, this sort of final production output as a PDF. So I can take my notebook, notebook, and I can just knit it as a PDF, and this is a PDF version of the same document. So there's a, there's a, the notebook system is sort of a standalone system, but it also interoperates with all these R Markdown formats. Okay, let's take a look at um, what happens when I've got, I, I'm showing code chunks that are executing in like 100 milliseconds very, very quickly. What happens when I've got uh, a document that maybe takes five minutes or a chunk that takes 30 seconds? Um, in this document, I'll do a run all. And you can see I've said I want to run all the chunks, but it's taking a long time to import this data. So it's showing me I've executed this code already. Uh, I've got this code scheduled. You can see it's scheduled for execution, but it has not executed yet. Um, so we're, we're trying to do a lot of things to make it really intuitive to work within the notebook, even when you're not, you're not getting instant responses. When you, when you do a run all like that and things are queued for execution, you can still continue editing uh, and working in the document. Okay, let's take a look. I sh I've shown um, text output and I've shown plots, but um, we have a system in R called HTML widgets that basically lets you um, create interactive JavaScript visualizations kind of the same exact way that you create plots. In, plot, in R, typically a plot is a single R function. So similarly, HTML widgets let you take a single R function and create uh, an interactive visualization. So I'll, I'll, this notebook here has a Digraph interactive time series. So this is just a time series you can see on some sample data. It lets me, you know, page through it, zoom, things like that. Here's a HTML widget that gives me a heat map, interactive heat map, so I can hover over and get attributes of the data and zoom in. And here is an HTML widget that gives me a leaflet map. So um, HTML widgets all work exactly the way you'd expect them to uh, within, within the notebook system. Um, the, the principal focus of notebooks is, of course, executing R code. But when you're working in R, you're, you're typically, you often need to involve other languages. One thing that's done very commonly is people will write high performance functions using RCPP. So here's an example I've written. Uh, I've used this, the C++ Armadillo library to write one high performance function that works on, on a couple matrices. Uh, and in this notebook, I've got my C++ code embedded in the notebook. I've got, uh, in this case, I'm doing, I'm doing a benchmark. So I've got the R version, and then I've got a benchmark. So I'll just do a run all on that. You can see it'll compile the C++ function and run the benchmark. And there it 
it is. You can see the difference. So, so we can very easily um, have RCPP chunks. Uh, and we also can, can do um, other languages that you might have in a, in a pipeline. So here's an example of, uh, I'm going to use bash to uh, concatenate together three text files into a single text file. And then I'm going to use Python to um, use pandas to do some data manipulation. And then I'm actually going to um, take that data, I'm going to send it over to R using a package called Feather. And for those of you who haven't seen Feather, it's a package that Wes and Hadley worked on together to provide a very high performance binary serialization format for data frames. So once Pandas has, has created the data frame that I want, I, can, I write it to a, a Feather file and then I read it into R. So let me execute the Python code and now I, I read that Feather file into R and I do a ggplot from it. So if you have pipelines that involve other languages, Bash, C++, Python, et cetera, then those are accommodated really well in, uh, in our markdown and, and within notebooks. All right. So I want to quickly just punctuate what I, I talked in some detail about the file format, but I think it's really important to understand this. The source code for a notebook is an R markdown file, identical to every R markdown file that you might have seen uh, and worked with in the past. But they also have an associated HTML file. And that HTML file has both the, R, the RMD source code embedded in it as well as the output. And when you save a notebook inside our studio, it's going to automatically it'll save the RMD file. It'll also automatically save the nb.html file. So there's no special step required to create that version of the notebook that's shareable. Um, you can also, there's an API for creating these notebooks from the command line, which I'll describe in a moment. Um, and then it's also important to uh, remember that we can render these notebooks into any and all other R Markdown format that's available. Why HTML? It, it might, it, it's hopefully obvious, but there's no special viewer uh, for R Markdown files. I can push them up to GitHub and people can view them there. I can publish them in Dropbox. I can put them on any web server. I can send them as an email attachment if I want. The, they are viewable by anyone and everyone with no special software. Um, and it's actually possible to encode source code and metadata and other structured information right inside the HTML file so that when, it go, when editors and parsers go to open it, they can actually pull out the structured information. Um, and we have uh, APIs that facilitate that in the R Markdown package. So we have a, a, an output format called HTML Notebook and you can just render any, R, at the command line, you can render any RMD file into an HTML Notebook, uh, an, an NB HTML file. You, if you have an, uh, an nb.html file, you can also parse it to get all the source code and other structured information, that the, the actual code chunks uh, separate that are in the file. And so these APIs, we imagine if, if another front-end tool wanted to build a, a notebook editing experience like our studio, they could use these APIs, or people wanted to write conversion tools between uh, our notebooks and, uh, and other types of notebook systems, then these APIs could be used for that as well.